Hello, Facebook. It's Thursday. You know what that means. It's the Loud House Podcast live with your old pal McGee and with me as always, the lovely and talented Ms. Beth Simmons and the leggy and busty Mr. Dino Alexander is in the house. Hey. I know. Believe it or not. <laughs> What's happening? You, I know. What's been going on? I, I was here a little bit last week. A little, little bit. bit. A little bit. A bit. A bit. I don't know about you guys, but I am stoked. Today is the day, hopefully the greatest movie ever created in the history of cinema debuted on HBO Max and in the theaters. I'm talking about Dune, my all time favorite book. And the original was always my favorite anyway, the David Lynch version, because it fucking had Sting. Sting was a villain in the movie. So how much cooler could you get than to have Sting? in a movie in 1983. To have Phil Collins instead. (laughs) But Sting didn't have his shirt on. I don't want to see Phil Collins without his shirt on. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny. I actually rewatched because like, I'm one of those people that if I see that there's something still continue watching that hasn't been completely created, completely finished, I have to, I have to uh, finish it. So you actually uh, showed us the book you have, Dune, and it said Messiah on it. Can you show us oh, that again? Absolutely. It's going to lower my, my, my phone a little bit, but Dune Messiah, this is the second book in the series. So is, and... this, is this about end times or what is this? <laughs> okay. So the funny part about it is the book was written in the 1960s. The original Dune was written by Frank Herbert in the 1960s. And a lot of people have a lot of different viewpoints on what the book means okay. based on what their personal perspective is. So you have this desert planet that only has one thing going for it, which is the spice. The spice helps with, with space travel. It helps with uh, clairvoyance. It helps with a lot of different things. So it's kind of like, and so you have House Harkonnen, and House Atreides, the good guys and the bad guys. House Harkonnen's the bad guys. House Atreides are the good guys. And then you have the emperor who is basically causing a rift between the two. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have gone deep into the thought process of what um, the story, what's behind the story in the sense that one group is, it, that, that it all takes place, it's based on the Middle East. Mm-hmm. And that Arrakis is the desert of the Middle East. The spice is the oil and the Harkonnens and the Atreides represent the, the, the Jews and the Arabs. It's interesting and it's Iraq because they think Babylon, mystery Babylon is in Iraq, right? It's Iraq, it's, it's, Iraq. it's yeah. Iraq, Arrakis is the name of the planet. Mm-hmm. You threw me off there. Arrakis oh, is the name okay. of the planet. And so, but depending on your viewpoint, as is to which house represents which group of people. So depending on what side you're on, you say, okay, well, you know, the the Fremen, House Atreides, which becomes part of the Fremen, which are the natives of Mm -hmm. Arrakis, would be the Arabs. The Harkonnens are are the are the Jews that have that were displaced and have been given this piece of land. Mm -hmm. And the Empire is the United States that is causing the rift between these two cultures of people. So basically it's replicating what's going on in the world today. <laughs> right. The thing, the funny part is, is that this book was written 50 years ago. Well, I 50, mean, 60 years ago. Well, 50 years ago, there was always issues in the Middle East. It's been going on <laughs> since the, since, you know, since the, the dawn of time, if we can, if we can, if we want to yeah. go that far. But so it's, and so the whole point is, is that there's this character that may or may not be the messiah based on whether or not he drinks the water of life and sees within it's amazing it's an amazing epic story that people have been debating and reading about for the last 60 years and you know it was made in the 80s the the original movie was made in the 80s mm-hmm. by david lynch and god bless him he did the best he could with what he had had a great cast. Uh, Patrick Stewart was in the original movie. Um, Jose Farrar plays the emperor. Just yeah. everybody, like you'll watch the original movie and go, oh, I know that guy. Oh, I know that woman. Oh, I've seen them before. 
it's tons of people that you've seen and Sting as Fade Harkonnen, you know, one of the best villains of my of my personal favorites. He's in the top five of, of villains. No, so it should have been I'm, Ozzy. If, it, if it's a villain, let's get Ozzy. I could see him doing a good job. No. I, yeah. I'm sorry. Beth, or or, you or know, Rob Zombie. Or, while, Rob, or Rob Zombie. You, you've All gotten right. to a point. <laughs> there, there, we've gotten to a point in our relationship where I now treat you like a little sister. Okay? You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> you got up. You're wrong. It's you're wrong. I'm okay? going to have to hey, check hey, this out. McGee, does, does some shit blow up? Lots of shit blows up. Oh, then lots uh, of okay. shit blows up. Okay. It's well. it's an amazing story. The cool part is, is that for those that didn't see the original, they have a blank slate. For right. those that have seen the original, we are so stoked that the that the technology is there for the special effects that mm -hmm. we didn't get in 1983. And there was there's a documentary about a, a, an Italian director, Genowarski. I can't, if I'm I'm probably butchering his name. But there's a documentary about the screenplay that he had for his original vision of Dune, which incorporated H.R. Geiger doing a lot of a, a lot of the set dressing, which he ended up doing in the original. Mm -hmm. um, and for those that don't know, H.R. Geiger is the man who gave us all of the, the grotesque beauty of the Aliens movies. Um, oh. So it, it was like his exact quote or at least the translated quote was, I wanted to create a movie that felt like a four hour acid trip without ever doing any drugs. And that was the thing is that this book and the story is so epic that this could be the series that will take the number one spot over Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. Like this is one of the most epic series the of Hunger novels Games. ever written. <sighs> and so we could have a generation, two generations worth of movies out of the stories that have been written and it could go forever. So, and plenty of spinoffs. So right. you could get a great fix of Jason Momoa for all of you that are in love with Jason Momoa. You'll get the Duncan Idaho series. You'll get, oh, I just, we need to get into the topic because as soon as we're done, I'm going and watching you a know, movie in the living room right. with the lights I off. I had heard briefly that this movie is coming out and I thought, oh, I don't want to pay the money to go see a movie. I'm being a cheapskate lately. But now that you talked about this, I'm, I may actually spend the money. I might actually do Beth, it. I will go with you. I plan on going to see it as many times as humanly possible. So, I, you know, I promised the boy that I would see it in the theater with him first. But mm -hmm. as soon as you're ready to go, I will go. I will put a seat in between us. We can, <laughs> we, I'll, I'll wear my mask. I mean, you know, I'm already, I got the same vaccine you do, yeah. but I will go with you. Bring Ross okay. with us. Bring Terry with us. We'll make it a party. We'll rent out a theater. I don't care. I, want, I will go see this movie every time with anybody who wants to go see it. I went fun. to go see the uh, James Bond flick uh, a couple weekends ago and uh, they had an extended preview or extended trailer for it. It looks awesome. And then the, even, even the trailer had the full on, you know, THX sound going on, which was great. And yeah, it looks really good. And then I've also uh, talked to a couple of people that have seen it already. Uh, they saw it a couple of days ago or whatever. And they said, it's, it's really, it could, it could be the next Star Wars. Wait, did they it see, was, a, they saw a free screening of it? Is that they how saw, they saw it? In, in Phoenix. Yeah. They saw a, uh, a, a, a you know, I miss they, they, those they, free screening days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's, even, but they're not, they're not doing, they, they would never do that down. Even if it was normal times that they, they wouldn't do something that big down here. All the big stuff is in Phoenix and we get this, we get the small potatoes. Down here. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's one of those things where like, it took everything in my being not to watch it as soon as it as soon as I was able to today because at 3 p.m. it became available. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I'm like, should I wait? Should I go see it in the theater tomorrow? And I'm like, nope, I'm watching it tonight, no matter wait, what. But it how, took how much, I wait. how much was it? Oh, it's, it's on HBO. How much was it? It's on, oh, it's on, it's on HBO. It, it's on HBO. Oh, yes. Right. My sister has HBO. I can scam it off her. <laughs> there you go. Um, yes. it, it's but it was one of those things that it took everything in me to not watch it without Terry. Like the mm -hmm. fact that I managed to wait this long and wait until Terry got home. So yeah. I if I'm, I were I'm you so though, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't blow it watching it at home. I would I would I would go to the movie the movie theater tonight or tomorrow I, if I were you because well, I think I, you, wanna, you should watch it. I know you're going to do it, but the first time you should see it in all its glory. 
But I know, but I don't you think have I a good wait. you have a good sound system there, right? I do. I have, be a, I have a, It'll be I fine. have a good sound system, and our TV is pretty goddamn big. As long as I as I'll put my gla- I'll wear my glasses while I watch the movie, so I don't <laughs> miss the little details in the corners. And yeah, All I don't right. think I can wait till tomorrow. I don't. I there's no way. I've been waiting two years. Two years I've been waiting for it. It was supposed to come out a year ago. So I've been waiting for over a year knowing that it's finished. And I've been I've been dying ever since. Like I'm mm. even excited about about like Dave Batista being cast as the Beast Raban. Like mm-hmm. ever the casting is just epic. Epic. So All I'm right. so stoked for this movie. So the show's over. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Well, actually, Beth had a really came up with a really good subject for today's show. Um, I know that for those that are new viewers, you're oblivious to it. For those that have been watching since the beginning, we've started blurring the lines a little bit of of the Rock and Roll 101 and Happy Hour, kind of changing up our format a little bit and just being a little bit more freeform. Um, mm-hmm. so, so today's subject is about is about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. A great ar- point of argument for the three of us always. Yes. And just really interesting. So Beth, why don't you tell everybody what what we're going to be discussing with the Rock and Roll well, Hall of Fame today? This week they announced a few of the presenters and those that are uh the who they're who will be doing the inducting of others. And so if Dino can pop up that article, we'll yeah, go to that. Which one do you want? Which the one Rolling, on that one? The Rolling Stone article. It talks about who's going to be doing everything now all of right. course they haven't announced all the presenters at this point but they'll be filming it october 31st and it should be airing on hbo in november oh wow um, yeah. yeah they always so do this gonna... that weird delay but they they do a nice production of it so but That's so so did i because i can't remember i know that did they did they televise excuse me did they televise last year's rock and roll hall of fame did they even do one or did they do a makeup or whatever? Cause I know usually it was in March and that was at the, you know, that yeah, we, we yeah, lost, they, we lost the first one because of the shutdown. Well, and they, then the second one, we were still in pandemic mode. They did something, but it wasn't the norm of what they did okay. when they put it together last time. Yeah, I think it was all videos like, you know, everybody, the pre-done videos and pre-done performances, if I remember. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So, so this is, go. This is what I'm getting a kick out of. Okay, so do you remember who played Tina Turner in the Tina Turner movie? It would be Angela Angela Bassett. Bassett. Yeah, she is going to be up there, you know, doing the induction of Tina Turner. I think that's a great idea. I thought Tina Turner was already in the Hall of Fame. Well, they, so what had happened was they announced the people ahead of time and then they're doing the show part of it. I think she's in there already with uh, Ike and Tina. Yeah. Okay, maybe that yeah. was it because I mean oh, I remember I remember like in the in the inaugural performances when they were inducting like the Rolling Stones and you know Chuck Berry in the early days like in the late eighties early nineties I remember seeing like Tina Turner on stage with the Stones doing you know doing the performance part but I thought that she got inducted as a solo artist even before that no but, no th- this is the first time. Oh my God. And it's, un- no. and it's unclear if Tina there. will be there. It's unclear if Tina will be there either. Yeah. Because Wait, I guess she's. Really? It says it right here in the article. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. I missed that yeah. whole part. That's not yeah. good. Well, I think she's, uh, you know, she's not, she's, doing, she's not, she's doing not, well, she's, she's not, she, well, not that she's not doing well. I think she's kind of just, she's kind of out of the limelight now. She's kind of, you know, she's mm-hmm. done with doing that. So I don't think that she's probably, her chops are probably not there where she used to be. I mean, even in her, you know, the latter part of her career, she is still a motherfucker to deal with. So, uh, you know, yeah, but, as far I as, mean, on, I mean, on stage, I mean, she, cause she, she was just, she's awesome, you know, and she's she, yeah. on that level. She doesn't need to sing though. There are so many musicians that just take yeah. their award and leave, you know? That's true well, too. And on top of that, I mean, it's there's a quote there that says, my relationship with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, quite obviously, it's not copacetic. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I can't tell if that's Rundgren that was saying that or if that was, from the looks of it, it might have been Todd Rundgren that said that. But yeah. I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, maybe Tina's just kind of in a fuck you kind of mood because she should have been in there a long time ago. I mean, Jesus, if, if anybody deserves to be in a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 
like Tina Turner's a badass. She's been a badass for 45, 50 years at this point, you know, and great. Yeah, it's okay that she got put in with, with Ike, but fuck that dude. She needs to be in there on her own. Yeah. You know, and she should have been in there on her own back in the 90s, to say the least, or at least the day, what the year that her 25 year, you know, cutoff is, she should have been first ballot in there as soon as it was available. You know? Yeah. No, I agree. She's well, definitely then, on that level. But then there are a lot of musicians that are at that level that get passed over all the time. I oh, want to note Scorpions. The Scorpions should be in there already. I don't know why they're not. Well, I mean, Tina Turner's in another echelon. Tina Turner's yeah. in the in the Rolling Stones, Beatles, yeah. that echelon of, you know, first ballot Hall of Famers. And yeah. not to take anything away from the Scorpions, they're great. But if I have a choice between Tina Turner going in and the Scorpions, Tina needs to be in there a week yeah. and a half before she should have been even considered, mm-hmm. period. You know? Yeah. It's and, and that's the thing. And I know it's it's very subjective, but when it comes to time frame, time frame is the most important part in the dynamic of the Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's if you are if you are if you are worthy of going into the Hall of Fame, you should be going in within the first two or three years of when you are able to by their 25 year cutoff. You should, because they, I mean, they want you to still be able to get up on stage and sing. So they should do that. They, you know, stand by that. The, well, but here's the, the counter. Some of them, they're waiting until that person is dead because, because they don't want to deal with them. Uh, and right. they can they can put in, in their own narrative. And let's all be honest, Jan Winter is someone who likes to dictate the narrative and he's a son of a bitch to begin with. Mm-hmm. So I can imagine that he that if there's something spiteful, oh, well, Tina wouldn't do an interview with us. So we're not going to put well, her in until did, she's dead. Well, but here's you know? the thing. Do you remember a few years ago, um, it was, well, oh gosh, um, Steve Miller went on stage and he just made a, he, he talked pretty poorly about the rock hall during his speech yeah. so there's a few people that have done it you know and gotten and, away with it well because I, well and the thing is is that what are they going to do it's out there yeah. once it's been said it's out there and he had a good point he was like he had to pay for his wife and kids to be there he you know, like there should have been one of those things where like the entirety of a band should be welcomed in without having to pay if they are the honorees. I, I think, well, if, if you're the inductee, I think you're allowed a plus one, but they have so much money and it goes to a charitable, like this is, I mean, it goes to a good cause to keep the rock hall around for people to go and check out all these artifacts. So, I mean, it's a fundraiser for them they, too. Well, they, can get, they can get a corporate sponsor for that. I mean, that's- Yeah, enough. there's, oh, no, that's there's no reason why Coca-Cola couldn't have a banner or eh. anybody else, you know. And anyways, I mean, in, in yeah, I think you know, limiting it to one person per inductee is also a little foolish as well. I think you know, you could definitely, I think two or three per, you know, per inductee. But then if you have a big band, then it's a little bit harder, you know. But it, it's hard to say. But you know, I I think that at least you know, because some people are going to want their wife or significant other but then they're going to want at least one or two or three of the kids or you know whatever so it, mm-hmm. it could probably get a little dicey so i think they have to well, have some kind of cutoff so what they pay so what they'll for, pay for so for example when you have a solo artist going mm-hmm. in okay or a band okay an entity that has yeah. not had more than one original member from beginning to end i agree that it doesn't necessarily you don't need to have every like for example Black Sabbath is a, is a perfect example. When mm-hmm. Black Sabbath went into the Hall of Fame, at most, at most, other than the four original members, the only two exceptions that should have gone in with them would have been Dio and uh, Vinny. They're the only two people that could yeah. have even, that should have even been considered to yeah. be able to go in other than the original four members. So when you have something like, for example, you know, Steve Miller Band, it's one thing if all the original members have been part of the Steve Miller band since the beginning, but more than likely it's been whoever he's needed at any given time 
Steve Miller should have been able to bring the entirety of his family because he doesn't have all the original members of his band. Right. You know, right. same thing with Santana. Santana's an artist that is featured as a solo artist, even though it's a band. How many people have been through that band? You right. know, yeah. if you want to induct the initial original lineup, that's fine. But you don't need to have the 75 people that have played, you know, right. to the bongo drummer that was there that hasn't, that, that changes every every tour. I, you don't I don't that. know. I don't think, I mean, the session players, they would feel pretty left out. You know, people feel left out with this thing, you know. Session players do not get credit on albums half the time, That's let, true. Alone, that is true. let alone be part of the band. Otherwise, Jimmy Page should have been inducted 17 <sighs> different times because right. how many how many bands did he, he was with the Kinks, he played on Kinks albums, he played mm -hmm. on Stones albums. Are you going, are you going to induct Jimmy Page for yeah. every band he's ever played for yes. other than the Yardbirds yes. and Led Zeppelin? Yep. yep. Yeah. I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it. He but, did um, <laughs> for the Yardbirds and Led Zeppelin. Not everybody can. If everybody gets in, Beth, then it's not special anymore. That's well, the other part. Yeah. Well, let's make it not special anymore. It's, gotten, <laughs> it's, it's already, it's, it's already at the point, you know. No, but um, so tickets are on sale now. If you guys want to go to Cleveland, October thirtieth, you might be able yeah, to. Yeah, nothing a like ticket. Cleveland in late fall. This is probably <laughs> not the best time to go. But yeah, even to a Cleveland Cleveland Browns football game, everybody's hurt. You don't even want to go to Cleveland. Yeah. It's a mistake yeah. by the lake. Yeah, yeah, well, if you know if Cleveland is playing a game, watch them when they play out here in Arizona because right, it's, it's sure. much nicer yeah. weather, you know. But and plus, um, we're doing better than they are. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> undefeated, baby. Um, and then so it says uh, also here um, uh, with uh, Tina Turner inductee uh, in, er, induction, excuse me, uh, Christina Aguilera. Mickey Guyton, her and Brian Adams will be on uh, hand to perform her songs. Uh, McCartney is going to be speaking for the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Drew Barrymore will induct the Go-Go's. I think that's kind of a good one. Mm -hmm. I, that, that, that tracks. Yeah. I, see. I yeah. mean, short of, short of having one of their contemporaries who's already in, I think that Drew right. Barrymore is a great person to induct the Go-Go's just because we associate Drew Barrymore with the 80s the same way we associate the Go-Go's. Right, um, but, right. Wh but why not like Stevie Nicks induct them? Why would Stevie Nicks have I any connection to the Go-Go's? <laughs> or like yeah, a... Stevie Nicks probably looks down on the Go-Go's. <laughs> I would That's say at saying. most, like you could say like, uh, for example, maybe like- uh, Pat Benatar? Pat Benatar, well, no, that would be a point because <laughs> she's not in. That would be... But like uh, Joan Jett. Joan Jett's yeah. in the in the Hall of Fame. Joan yeah, Jett would be, be would be great, being that she she created the archetype for what the Go Go's are with yeah. the right. Runaways. You yeah. know that would be appropriate. Like personally, I think I think that for the Foo Fighters, it should have been Chris Novoselic that inducted yeah. the the Foo Fighters because of his connection yeah. with Dave Grohl. And I'm not even going to go into depth about the fact that Foo Fighters got in before Soundgarden right yeah but i mean i can't see that nope. happen happening the the chris nope. novoselic i don't oh, I hear okay oh, no, no 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 on the sound garden no well, no, I well think on the sound garden who, who has sold more more albums though uh has has sound garden sold more overall than uh, um, chris cornell has let's Not just chris say that let's just say well, that with everything garden, whole collection sound garden was the first seattle band to break big right they were soundgarden was the first seattle band on a major label soundgarden right. was the first band to go on major tours with major bands so soundgarden without soundgarden paving that road sure we don't get that blast from the nirvanas and the pearl jams and so on and so forth maybe but, nirvana but pearl but jam mm. But would you accept it if it were just Chris Cornell solo? No, you want no, Soundgarden because it hasn't been. It's still because Chris Cornell still hasn't hit the twenty-five year mark as a solo artist. He's still got four more years. Okay. And and Soundgarden, I'm sorry, but Chris Cornell alone, as much as I love him, does not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame without Soundgarden mm -hmm. to begin with, because Soundgarden was the catalyst to make. Chris Cornell a star. 
Yeah. That's where he became a star was with Soundgarden. And yes, granted, they didn't, they didn't get huge until 94. They were still the first big Seattle band before Nirvana, before Pearl Jam. Mm -hmm. It was them and Mother Love Bone that were the two big bands that had, that broke out of Seattle. Mm -hmm. Right. So for sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, Moving I, on. I, I, yeah. Uh, and Dr. Dre is going <laughs> to, going to induct LL Cool J's. And it's weird. I think Dr. Dre is already in with NWA, right? Isn't it? He NWA? Is. Yeah. He is. yeah. So that it's weird that LL Cool J is taking so long because LL Cool J was way before, before NWA. NWA. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. and, and, and in all honesty, the only other person, the only other people that I could see inducting LL Cool J there's there's a handful of people that would have been better off because of they were they were before him. That would yeah. be like Run DMC, yeah. yes. Russell Russell Simmons himself, who, right. who was Rick, you know part of Def Jam, or yeah. Rick, Rick Rubin, who was right. the other half of Def Jam. Grandmaster Flash, Grandmaster yeah. Flash, you know Beastie Boys, or, like the remaining Beastie Boys could have done. Yes, yeah. that so would have been perfect. It, it it should have been, and in all honesty, it should have been it should have been an East Coast. Death Jam artist that yeah. well, yeah, but if, if it's East Coast, would you ever do P Diddy because he's East Coast? No, no, because LL Cool after. J was be way before. Well, before so yeah, you got to remember LL Cool J broke in what eighty six. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I'm mean, bad. you've got to look at you've got to look at his predecessors. You know, Grandmaster Flash, great, great one who's already in the Hall of Fame. Run DMC, who's already in the Hall of Fame. Beastie right. Boys were were on were parallel with LL Cool J in that in those right. early days, mm -hmm. but yeah. they obviously were the when crossover yeah. that that were bigger than everybody because they just happened to be white guys that rapped. So yeah. they they had that crossover that a lot of other artists didn't. And they also kind of mm -hmm. went alternative too. They they went more rock. You know they they they, kinda, did. they, they the, embraced the check your head the album. Yeah yeah they embraced playing their own instruments even on intergalactic and all the later right they too, were they yeah. were a little bit more rock and roll and punk rock in the beginning with license to ill it was right. punk rock rap mixed together that was something right. different than everything else so but yeah i it's for me it's it's just kind of you know like if you wanted to be funny you have cool mo d in dr right. l cool j because hey, of their battle big daddy kane <laughs> yeah daddy kane. Know, oh. but I, I still i still think it just should have been east coast but when it comes down to it it's also 99 percent of it who's in the good graces of the rock and roll hall of fame who's in the good graces of jan wenner and you know what i think that's why chris cornell's not in it because he was not on the good graces of them bingo what did he do to get on their bad side i, I thought you knew the backstory on this well a big part of it was the exploitation of children Oh, he wants in to do the, the documentary in on the, that. In the music yeah. and in and, and, and Hollywood in general. But, and, you know, Jan Wenner, once he came out, was, it was not hidden that he had an inkling for younger men, you mm -hmm. know, that were, he, he liked to jailbait, you know, aged men. Wow. It came out in the, in the late 90s that Jan Wenner had a particular proclivity. So, and so Chris and Chester were creating a documentary and they were going to also portray that in their documentary, I take it? Well, that was part of the rumor and innuendo, whether or not it was actually ever going to happen or whether or not, you know, they did a lot of work with those organizations to help yeah. missing and exploited children and like the Rain Foundation and stuff like that. So, you know. I mean, I don't want to go to conspiracy theories. That was last week, but you, you know. <laughs> Plus, you don't did want to Jan go Winter know Jeffrey Epstein? Did he? <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> was he on the flight log? Should we know something? I don't know, yeah. but I know that. But I know that, like, for for a hot minute, Chris Cornell was a big part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He inducted Hart. Um, I know that he was. He, you know, he was. He was trying to do the right thing in terms of the political side of rock and roll um, in terms of getting himself in the good graces, but it just wasn't you know, enough. That's all right. He, they're, they're in my hall of fame, which is more important. Yes. So, yes. All right, Beth, Beth, you, you sent me another article here and it talks about uh, the remaining inductees. It's so, uh, the, uh, but uh, no, it these, says here, these are the, 
Oh, yeah, this oh. Is, it says presenter for the remaining inductees: Todd Rudgren, yeah. Kraftwerk, Jay Z, LL Cool J, uh, Charlie Patton, Gil Heron, or Gil Scott Heron, and Randy Rose have yet to be announced. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So we don't know, but we do know LL Cool J. Uh, I guess that Rolling Stone uh, uh, article is a little bit has a little more updates. So LL Cool J is being inducted by Dr. Dre, but the rest of them we still don't know who is going. To I be say this. Vince Neil inducts Todd Rundgren. That'd just be funny. <laughs> I think. Oh, I go. I go one better and say Steven Tyler inducts Todd Rundgren. Oh yeah. You, you know the history of that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, tell, of, no, no, you got to tell everyone. Not everyone knows. Well, okay. So for, for those that don't know, um, Steven Tyler had a relationship with former Playboy playmate and model uh, Baby Buell and had two girl, two children with her who ended up being raised by none other than Todd Rundgren mm -hmm. because Todd Rundgren is who B.B. Buell ended up with. And for the better part of most of these young ladies' lives, they thought that Todd Rundgren was their dad. One of them and being an actress. <laughs> one of them being the, the, the lovely and talented Liv Tyler. Yep. Um, she did not know until she was about, I think she said she was like 11 or 12 years old. She found out that Steven Tyler was her dad because she happened to look at a picture and go, I look a lot like that guy. <laughs> you know? And mom used to date him. So what the hell, ma? And you know, and they rekindled their, their father-daughter relationship later on. But Todd Rundgren is one of her dads, you know, yeah. he's the man that raised her. So yeah. it, it, that would be, I mean, you want to talk about the rock and roll drama and turning the screws, that would be a good one. I think we'll that's talk about, talk idea. about weird, weird, uh, you know, kind of innuendo and like just kind of weird sexual, just, you know, things is like he put Liv Tyler in all those jailbait Aerosmith videos, you know, back in the 90s with uh, what's her name? What was the, the other Alicia girl's name? Silverstone. Oh, Alicia Silverstone. Silverstone. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that must have been weird because, hey, I haven't seen you for a while, but do you mind getting all weird and naked in these videos <laughs> yeah. for my band? Yeah. It was, that, it was a little, it was a little uncomfortable to say the least. Yeah. You know, the good thing is the only thing that made me not feel creepy about it was the fact that, you know, she's a couple of years older than I am. So I'm, or, or at least in the same general area. So right. I was like, all right, at least she's my age. It doesn't right. feel creepy to look at her, you know. And then uh, they pimped her out. But. Yeah, it yeah. is really creepy. <laughs> and then uh, to answer your question from earlier, McGee, yes, last year's ceremony was held virtually due to the pandemic. Okay. Right. And, right you know, I, I mean, when, when, I, when I look at craft work being an inductee, there's only, one, there's only one choice that I can think of that's already in the Hall of Fame, and that would be Trent Reznor. Mm -hmm. Trent Reznor would be the perfect inductee for for craft work because I mean that's part of where his inspiration for Nine Inch Nails came from. Yeah, you know, was bands like Craft. Yeah, well, Depeche Killing Mode. Joke. Depeche Mode would be a good a good one for that that too. Uh, like Gahane. Depeche Mode, they're in the Hall of Fame, aren't they? They're already. Yeah, in there, I'm pretty right? sure they went in yeah. the same year as Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, they're kind of in. I think of them in that that whole time frame. You know, that New Order Depeche Mode you know, that kind of British new wave. Dancing. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, craft work, craft work is, craft work is, 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 you know, definitely closer into the industrial side where, right. where you got, where you got that early, you know, like we just hit the uh, 32nd anniversary of Nine Inch Nails Pretty Hate Machine. It came mm -hmm. out, it came out 32 years ago yesterday. And if you listen to that album, you know, for the most part, most people associate Nine Inch Nails with with uh, with uh, uh, Downward Spiral. That was the right. big that was the big explosion album for them with Closer and March yeah. of the Pigs. Um, but if you listen to that to that first album, Pretty Hate Machine, it's a lot more danceable. It's a lot more. Right. It's got a little bit more of a pop edge to it in the sense that it was more club sound than it was industrial heavy. And mm -hmm. same thing right. with like ministry. Ministry was the same way. A lot of that early ministry sounds more disco than it does industrial. And right. that comes from that 80s era craft work music that was inspiring. And there's a great documentary um, on, on uh, Prime right now. And it's about the wax tracks out of Chicago 
and all those industrial bands like KMFDM, um, Stomp 442, Nine Inch, the early version of Nine Inch Nails and Ministry. Stabbing Westward. Well, things, no, yeah. we're going even earlier into like, oh, okay. and how like this, this group of, of musicians uh, um, would do would do these side projects because they'd only had each other. It was so right. incestuous that like you had like 30 bands that came out of like a group of like 15 guys. And, you know, you got your uh, revolting cocks and stuff like that, that all came from like the guy, you know, uh, uh, ministry. You had, you had Paul Barker from ministry joining up with uh, one of the guys from stop 442 or KMFDM. And all of a sudden we get this, these little super groups that came out of this this group so it's really cool check it out especially if you're into that industrial era stuff and see the history and it, it's pretty cool so yeah all right we'll allow it all right yes. all right so uh and then so then I, we were talking about how many rock stars are uh inducted the hall of fame more than once let's see here there's an article that uh there's quite That's a few of them. Yeah. And by the way, if yeah. you want to watch it on TV, HBO and HBO Max, November 20th is the day for that. Yeah, they do uh, like a kind of a, it's it's like delayed because they do a like, little bit of production on it too. They take tight things up. They make it a little more streamlined. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, if you ever watched, I mean, I still have a VHS of the 1995 the year that uh, Janis Joplin and Led Zeppelin and Neil Young all got inducted. And you can see that it's not, it was just live. And right. there was, you know, so warts and all, including like, you know, watching the guys tuning up their instruments on stage, getting ready mm -hmm. for the jam. So, I mean, there's part of it, it's nice to see the raw, but at the same time, when you've got a five hour ceremony, just give me the good stuff. I don't need to see all the yeah. nonsense, you know. There is one name I'm surprised. There There's Tina Turner right There's there. Tina. Yep, yeah. she will be inducted twice. Once with Tina and Ike. You were right, yeah. you know. There's I was right person, about something. You were right. No, there's <laughs> one down. person I'm shocked at that it hasn't been inducted twice. And I'll exactly. wait for exactly. you guys to scroll through and you'll... Okay. I want you guys to guess who it is. Ringo okay. Starr got inducted a second time solo. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm very surprised that this other person didn't. I mean, I get, I get, like for example, Rod Stewart, as we just saw, being in with the faces yeah. and solo. Uh, who? How was Carol King twice? Oh, as because a, she got one as a writer, as writer. a non-performer yeah. award, mm -hmm. right. and there's a lot of people that that absolutely definitely deserve it not that they need to have the big ceremony like once you get in as the artist you shouldn't have to get the secondary one that can just be a plaque on a wall um but yeah i mean like you see guys like especially these older guys that went on to do like all the guys from crosby stills nash and young got inducted with their early bands like buffalo springfield or the birds or the hollies you know, that's that's perfectly Religion? acceptable. Greg Hello? Wally. Okay. We're we're still here. Do you know? Can you not hear us? Uh oh. Dino has lost us. It seems that. I mean, I can still hear Beth. Can you still hear me? <laughs> well, okay. So Dino can't hear us. I'll tell you, Mike, who the person is who hasn't been inducted twice that should be inducted twice. Any ideas? Chris Cornell. Oh, of course you're going to say that. Oz <laughs> no, Ozzy. Ozzy's only inducted once with Black Sabbath, not on his well, solo material. Well, but at the same time, Ozzy is still actively active. It's rare that you end up with, um, with somebody that's not, that's, that's, I mean, it's rare. There, there are some, but I mean, for Ozzy, I can, he's definitely going in solo. There's he better no go doubt in solo, that. and and Dio needs to go in solo. He's yet to. Um, I, is Dio in for Black Sabbath? No, Dio's not in for anyone. Yeah, I, I would suspect that Dio would go in solo only. Yeah, and it will happen. It's just, I mean, the the, the uh, let's be honest. I mean, like think about the fact that you know, did Deep Purple even get in yet? I know that they were up for it at one point. I think they actually did. Let me double check that. Though. But I mean, like, I know that I know that 
if they did, it was after John Ward was already dead. Like it's, it's ridiculous. There are so many artists from the, like the sixties and seventies that still need to go in that haven't. Yeah. But, so, but so, we're throwing in, we're throwing in earlier people or people that aren't even necessarily somebody mm-hmm. that, that should be deserving. Like when you get there, you go, okay, these, these, this band definitely deserves their, their just dues, but did they deserve it before this per this group? And yeah. I know that a big part of it is that I know that they have consciously been working on the diversity side of it which is absolutely necessary. It is. However, how many artists of color from, from, from the 60s and the 50s still haven't gotten in that deserve to be there before the, the younger artists of color have gotten in now? And okay, yes, you know, it's great that if they're alive, they should be going in sooner. If it's posthumous, it's not as big of a deal. You give their honorable mentions, which they do, they have been getting better at. But mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, like, you know, I mean, the Supremes definitely needed to be in there before Shaka Khan. Not because yeah. Shaka Khan isn't worthy, but because the, the Supremes were around significantly earlier. Yeah. You know, um, Martha and the Vandellas deserve to be there because let's call it what it is. Without Martha and the Vandellas, the Who doesn't even have their first hit because their first hit was a cover of Heat Wave by Martha and the Vandellas. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things where they give a lot of legacy awards. They are trying to show the respect to the blues artists that were clearly ripped off by the by the by any of the artists from the 60s, be it American. Rolling Stones, we're looking at you. <laughs> the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, yeah. you right. know, everybody, even the Doors, you know, like right. there's, it's it was, it was rampant. And the part of it is, it wasn't even necessarily the artists that were, that were the reason why that happened. It was, you know, going Labels. back and looking at the discographies that I've been going through. It's, a, like, pr- it's the producers and the writers, right? It's, it's the producers issue. and the record companies that are going, we need a hit. And this song was a big hit five years ago by yeah. this artist rework it and it'll be a hit again for these artists yeah right. and, and they, the and they band, still the do that market. the stones and they yeah. still do that today you'll see yeah. that um, right but, but i mean it's it's a lot different like for me it's a lot different for someone like a perfect example bobby brown has a great hit in the 80s with a song called my prerogative biggest hit he had solo after leaving new edition it's only right for another pop artist to go oh I'm living a life where this song, identi- I identify with this song and I can turn it into a hit. Great, mm-hmm. Britney Spears does that. However, it's only worthy if the artist that did it first gets the publishing credits and everything else, which it's hard not to in this day and age. Yeah. So right. as long as they're getting their just dues and their publishing rights and so on and so forth, I'm all about a band taking something from what inspired them and making it their own as long as they give credit. The problem is, is all those early artists from the 30s and 40s and 50s that got ripped off by the bands from the 60s and 70s. Because copyright laws changed. Absolutely. Or the fact that they or the fact that they literally signed their signed it all away. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get that little bit of money that they needed at that time. Going back to your Deep Purple thing. Um, Deep Purple, yes, they were inducted into the Rock okay. Hall 2016 by Lars Ulrich. Okay. So okay. There you go. And they deserved it. And I'm just, it, it's one of those things where it's too often that they do the posthumous induction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's kind of why I'm surprised that now that he's dead, they didn't put Soundgarden in. You yeah. know? And now, had they been on the ballot for several years and hadn't made the cut, or have they yeah. not even been on I the ballot? Say, yet? I want to the say they've made year. at least one, one year. year where they were on the ballot, and it was it was relatively. I want to say it was after Pearl Jam and Nirvana, which mm-hmm. pissed me off to begin with. But Chris was still alive, mm-hmm. you know. So I think they'll get there. I think it's one of those things too. And plus, it's very. I'm sure maybe even like the band 
at this juncture maybe we're like hey we don't want to do anything yet because we it's still kind of weird this is the legal thing yeah. we don't want the wife getting all in there and just making right. it all weird and yeah, yeah. so maybe and, once they settle you know, all that and and i mean think about the drama that goes with that because i mean who do you which one of which one of his children gets to gets to accept his award do you bring all three or do you bring his firstborn well and his who has firstborn, to pay for that well, but at the same time, his <laughs> firstborn is from his first wife, Susan, who was their right. manager. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with with giving Susan all of her just due? Why not when include everyone? You, because not everybody gets to gets to be a part of it. It's not Aww. a participation trophy. <laughs> Susan Silver, his first wife, no matter how strange they may have been, yeah. is the reason why they got well, as yeah. far as they but his, did. His his widow also needs to be there too. No, she doesn't. She doesn't. Other than to thank you on behalf of Chris, she yeah. doesn't. She doesn't need to be inducted. She doesn't no, no, need no, to no. be she anything won't be more inducted, than but she need, Yes, she needs to be there to collect the award. For and sure. currently, she's doing more damage to his legacy than she is helping it. That's where my issue is with Vicky, is because she's doing more damage than than good. That's the biggest well, thing. Well, she, she's definitely keeping his name out there, though, with all Yeah, that. but she's pimping it. There's <laughs> a difference. There, I'm serious. There's a difference. There's mm -hmm. a difference between putting out shitty works of art that weren't finished for the mm -hmm. cash grab. That's not keeping a name alive. That's capitalizing on, on a memorialization, mm -hmm. okay? Whereas, you know, the band is saying, look, we want these demos so that we can finish them and put it out on a level that is that is you know worthy of him. worthy Assistant. of being yeah. called you know Chris Cornell or Soundgarden, yeah. and I'm and I'm willing to bet that these three men are honorable enough to the legacy of their friend that they would even produce the stuff that wasn't Soundgarden under a Chris Cornell banner that they don't even get anything from just so that it's done the way that he would want it to have been done. Nobody knows him I better than know. those three guys. I don't think they would do it for free. There's always a price to everything. They would probably do it for minimal or whatever base, yeah. you know. They would pay. probably do it for the pay of a production or of a of a producer. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you know? union scale is exactly. for that. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. they're not gonna get they're not gonna get the royalties off of it. It's not right. their music. But yeah. I, I would be more willing to believe that between Matt Cameron, Ben Shepard, and Kim Fail especially Kim Thale, mm -hmm. who's been with Chris, who's been with Chris since before either one of them had fucking facial hair, you know, it's that, that this man would care more about his friend's legacy than about the paycheck. At least mm -hmm. that's my hope is that they would be that upstanding to the legacy of their friend and their brother, but that's just me, you know, and I'm done. I'm done. Cause I it's know that sad. I get, too, I get too no, antsy sad. about it. Wow, step he's stepping down off the soapbox right now. Wow. I am. I am. All right. It's over. This ain't a rally, Whitey. <laughs> All right. So uh when's the last time you actually watched the uh Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stuff? I haven't watched it in decades. Uh -huh. you know, it's been a few years. the last one I watched was the Van Halen. And it was a, such a train wreck because uh, they <laughs> only Sammy and, and Mike were there. And then Velvet Revolver came came out and did two shitty versions of Van Halen songs, which were also a train wreck because yeah, they were a train wreck as a band as well. Uh, and uh, that was I, and I, then I, I watched the Kiss induction, but I did that all like YouTube because I wanted to see, mm -hmm. you know, how that all went down. But. Yeah, I, 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 the last one that I remember the most impressive performance that sticks out to me, I think it was the year I want to say it was Nirvana got inducted and they had Lord play with them who, who she did an amazing job. I was very impressed with that young woman. Um, Cat Stevens, Yusuf Islam was also yeah. inducted and that man when he performs brings tears to my eyes literally. I don't know what it is, what power that man has over me, but I can't listen to Cat Stevens songs without getting weepy eyed. You know, mm -hmm. it just it it pulls on the it pulls on the heartstrings. It warms the cockles. It's it's like a warm blanket to me. Um, and I think Joan Jett was inducted that same year. Like yeah. that's that's the one that I remember mm -hmm. last. 
Yeah. So and Miley you, Cyrus and Miley Cyrus did a tribute to Joan on that one, right? She performed a Joan Jet tune, right? I want to say that Joan performed with 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 the Blackhearts and had some guests come on and and perform with her. Mm-hmm. I can't remember because I remember Green Day being a part of it. I, yeah. I can't. It's it's all kind of a blur. You know? But I, I do remember the infamous speech by Alex Lifeson of Rush and he gets blah, up there and blah, he's blah, 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 like, blah It was blah. perfect. And it's it like, was, it was definitely impressive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you're, you're, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting recognition from an industry that has not given you the recognition that you deserve over the span of a 30 plus year career. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the fact that the guy who's in charge of it, I mean, Amit Erdogan is, was the president of the record company that, that, that Rush was on for a considerable amount of years with Atlantic yeah. Records. But Jan Wenner, again, big old douchebag that he is, never gave Rush the, the, the press that they deserved. And 99% of the articles that were written about them were negative over the span of, especially in the early years, you know, they bagged on Caress of Steel and Farewell to Kings and 2112, all that progressive stuff that was epic. They, they just shit all over it. So mm-hmm. that, that was, Alex Lifeson's a little too classy to just give the middle finger. So I thought that he did it perfectly. He was, a, <laughs> he was brilliant. Oh. All right, so we've only got uh, a few minutes left here. So I guess, you know, we always talk about the bands that shoulda, woulda, coulda. Um, Iron Maiden comes up, Judas Priest, all that, those Mm -hmm. ones. Um, Now that we're kind of getting on, we've kind of, okay, we've we've hit all the other big ones. What do you think are 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 there are there chances now that 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 this is going? Are they are they? Is there something like kind of like the the baseball Hall of Fame? Like you can only be on the 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 ballot for so long, and then after so many years, you, you they just won't put you on. You have to kind of get, uh, you know, it has to be kind of a movement from the people that are already inducted, or how does it work? Well, I, I don't think there's a limitation to how many times you get on the ballot, but I do believe this time around Judas Priest will make it if they get on the ballot because of everything that's gone on recently with Rob Halford, his, uh, you know, sudden cancer issue that he, right. and he's in remission. But I think that, I think the hall realizes, you know, let's get this. I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I feel like they are thinking, let's get this done before it's too late. I Especially, think Judas Priest, go ahead. Go ahead. But, but two, two years, they missed it. Two years, yeah. they were nominated and nothing. Kind of a uh, side note to that. I think Judas Priest is missing a golden opportunity right now because the Richie Faulkner guy, the replacement guitarist yes. for KK Downing, mm-hmm. uh, he had a uh, heart attack on stage, basically. He didn't realize he was having a heart attack. And then once the show was over, he was rushed to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. He's, he's fine now, but, but they had to have open heart surgery on him. Anyways, he has been playing the part of KK Downing all these years. And KK has been out there. He's got his uh, KK's Priest uh, mm-hmm. band with... Yeah. Uh, Tim the Ripper Owens, who was, you know, the, the replacement for Halford. Um, but this would be an excellent opportunity now to, for them to bring him. They, I'm sure there's must be, there's must be some real infighting there because this would be the greatest time to bring him back. And that mm-hmm. way you have Halford, you've got the bass player. Uh, what's his bass player's name? Uh, I forget his name right off the top oh. of my head. Um, I know I, I see his face, but yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's mm-hmm. he's like he's like the original OG, yeah. uh, and uh, and Halford. So at least you'd have three because Glenn Tipton doesn't really play with them anymore. He, mm-hmm. so I've heard he does it come out every once in a while, but he's got uh, MS issues. MS, so, but yeah, um, yeah. he he would if it got inducted, he would do. Yeah, that I think he would. He might be able to. Yeah, for for one performance, I think he could. But I mean, even just to tour, uh, I know that they postponed the tour, but well, if they were smart, they would have could have continued the tour. And, and just brought, brought in KK. That yeah, would have been that, smart. But I well, it would have sold. It would have sold any tickets that weren't already sold too. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but the so. problem is, I mean, it could also be a loyalty thing to Richie, you know, or it could right. be the fact that you know there's some bad blood over the fact that KK started his own band, KK's Priest. You know, right. like I'm sure he wasn't too. Fond I'm sure of KK that would idea. drop fucking 
the Ripper Owens like a fucking bad habit if he got a chance to go back to Priest again. But well, uh, <laughs> getting 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 back to your original point, it's it's getting to a point where, and and you know, I and I know I always manage to tie it into wrestling, but another Hall of Fame that is near and dear to me is the is the WWE Hall of Fame, and it's one of those things where I've noticed a lot of things are. How good are you with the guy who's in charge? Because otherwise they're going to wait till you're dead and then just put you in posthumously so they don't have to pay you. They don't have to deal with you and they can just still be able to honor you. So you get the recognition that you deserve, but they the way that they want it big, and the way that they want it with the narrative that they want it. Yeah. And that's my biggest issue with these things is, is that it's so political. It has so little to do with how much they've accomplished because again bands like maiden and priest and motorhead and the, the you know like they all deserve to have been there when they were alive and yeah. now they just they're just a name and a picture and you know all the original members of motorhead are dead yeah. eddie's dead phil's dead lemmy's dead so who's gonna go in and, and, and accept the award the last two guys that were in the Didi. band yeah. <laughs> you know, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be Mickey and and uh, and and other and the other film. Yeah. That's who's left, and it's not even. It's kind of pointless because no discredit to them. But when we think Motorhead, you think of Phil and Eddie, and you think yeah. Ace of Spades era, Bomber era, that that classic lineup. And that's the problem is that so many of these bands don't even have a classic lineup anymore. Fucking Foreigner, Foreigner yeah. doesn't have a classic lineup. You know, Porter's I pathetic. Mean, all these, yeah. all those bands. No, I mean, no, I, like I mean now. I mean now. now yeah, it's, I still it's like a fucking joke. Yeah. Just as an example, it's not foreigner anymore. That's it's right. a bunch of guys. It's a cover band that, that yeah. has access to the oh, original. But then what, when they bring Lou on stage, which they did for a few uh, concerts. I mean that. Yeah, but like even right. what's his name, uh, Mick Jones doesn't even play it. Like sometimes, like they he still sends the foreigner thing out there because he can't mm -hmm. physically do it anymore. <laughs> I mean, there's like literally no one it's, in the band. <laughs> it's, it's Charlie Daniels' band. Charlie yeah. Daniels isn't even in his own band anymore. It's ridiculous. Right. So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, at this point, if they're still running with the original lineup, get them in before they're dead. Right. Otherwise, you might as well put them in posthumously. Because, I would love it. it. Yeah, I would love it if they did, because uh, they would never do it because they were never the biggest band or they were never really groundbreaking ever, but there's still a band that kind of kicks around in the uh, in the metal sludge uh, of the 80s. Uh, LA Guns. I and just it. have yeah. <laughs> I just have both of them there and they just fucking both play the yes! same song at the same like just have them playing the same song at the same time two uh, two different stages and see who does it better you know yeah. or great yeah. white or some song, bullshit yeah. like that you know two completely different setups two yeah. drummers two bass players <laughs> yeah. four guitarists yes. Yes. and just watch the catastrophe just fall apart and then, then, then there'd be like a gigantic fist fight like halfway through yes. you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could do like Queen's Reich and Jeff hates Queen's Reich right Right. Yeah. All of them rats, you know. <laughs> it's, it's them, just, yeah. it, and that's the thing is that some of those bands that that are still out there and infighting, that's part of the reason why they're never going to get in. And it, and that is a big deal. It's two, you know, it's it's a bunch of guys that can't even sit in the same room to, to play on, you know, for a yeah. tour. But right. you want to go in? Oh well, my bass player has to go in too. Oh well, my drummer's got fuck all of you. It's not, you know, it's it's too much of a headache. You're not right. going to induct 17 people from one band over the span of a 20. That's why if I it, keep saying. If it were my rock hall, I would. <laughs> and see, that's the thing. You're too nice. You're too <laughs> nice. It's, you know, not everybody's an MVP. I'm sorry. I don't want to sound should like have... one of those boomers that go, oh, yeah, participation vote. But in this situation, it's really true. A lot okay, of guys in the band, okay. but but oh god, I don't know why that infuriates <laughs> me so much. But it's one of those things where it's like these guys didn't even write any of the fucking music. They're right. just stand-ins. They're stand-ins, and some of these cases, they're cover bands at this right. point. They're well, not like even, even the it's not deal. really limited to like you know the the rock stuff. I mean, like the Temptations. There's two versions of the Temptations out mm -hmm. there. Like, you know, they, I don't think there's any, I think only one of them has a, a, an original member. But um, when they went in, 
It was the original lineup that went into the Hall of there, Fame. Right. There were two versions of Yes, too, going around for three years. Oh, yeah. And yeah. when they got inducted, it was the original lineup that got inducted. Yeah. It was, it's, look at Metallica. Metallica, for the most part, it was their core. Dave yeah. didn't go in with Metallica. No. Dave Mustaine, he got an no. honorable mention from the band, but he didn't go in with them. And Jason was at, the, at one point they didn't even know if Jason was going to go in, mm -hmm. and they finally conceded and said yes, Jason deserves to go in. Yes, Rob deserves to go in, and yes, Cliff absolutely needs to mm -hmm. be mentioned and honored and put in. And they brought his family in. Okay, That's but right. in the in the end, you still had three core members that had been there from the first recording to the last recording. So for the most part, it was still the original band. They've only had one position that has had a rotation in it. So it made sense to honor those handful of people. Going back to, like I said, with, with Sabbath. Yes, Dio should have gone in with Sabbath. Vinny maybe should have gone in with Sabbath. But Dio absolutely should have yeah. been honored and mentioned with Sabbath. They did it and with the Van Halen, which was which was which was surprising. As they 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 put in Sammy Hagar, which was weird. Well, the, that, that was... the, the two the only two guys that showed up for the damn ceremony <laughs> were the two guys that weren't in the band at the time. Yeah, it should have been. It it really honestly it should have been the four original members and Sammy Hagar. No disrespect to Wolfie. He wasn't okay. well. He wasn't at that time. I don't. I don't think when they he went wasn't in. Even I, don't, in. No, I don't think he was even point. in at that point. They were. They were just getting ready to go out with him for the first time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It, it's it, but it, it, how amazing would it have been had Alex, Dave, Sammy, Mike, yeah. and 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 that would have been Eddie perfect. All, been on all performed on stage together. That would have been great. But going back to the Wolfie thing, I need to bring something up that really got me upset. So I was reading online, uh, Wolfie was complaining that he was at a show and there were some drunk people knocking at his bus door and he got all upset about it. And it's like, that's part of the thing. You should, it's exciting. Why would you be upset? They're your fan. Be happy. You know? Well, I, I mean, I, I followed, I, I was following Wolfie on Twitter leading up to him coming to Tucson with the hopes that, you know, I could pull off a, come on, man, if you harass somebody enough that they'll give in eventually, yeah. which I'm this close to that other guy, hopefully. Um, but it's, it was just one of those things where it's like, it's like, dude, it's Twitter. It's not a real place. If you're going to get butthurt over the things okay, that Chappelle. people say, let it go. <laughs> it's not, it, and I, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to comment on it, but yeah. I did watch it. And I have my opinion on it. So I just you know, don't it's... understand it. These are the people that are helping you continue your successful career. Why I think at this point upset? it's a COVID thing now. I think he's right. you know, he's he, he's in a bubble. He doesn't want to be, I mean, meet anybody that's not in in his bubble. You know? Think about yeah. it, Dino. We got we got to the we got to the barricade at the Rialto right. before, just as they were coming out. And I'm like, and, and I did, I did finally go, Hey Wolf, we got the youngest guy that was at the show right here. He's 14. It's his second concert. And he just kind of was like, thanks, man. That's great to have you. I hope you had a great time. And he waved and he acknowledged, but they kept walking to the backstage yeah. area and what and didn't come up. And I did kind of, as they kept walking, I even did, said, he is vaccinated. He's got a mask. Did on. you, did you, <laughs> did you even see Valerie by chance or no? No, she was. She no, Valerie she was, was there. there. She oh, was, was she? there <laughs> at the show. Then she at that was show, hiding. yes, she was there. Oh, well, See, good. this <laughs> is where Rialto Ross needs to give us the heads up and go, "Hey, yeah. man, Mama's here too. Maybe you can hit her up." I'm like, shocked you on, didn't Ross. see her. Wow. Hmm. Uh, if she was in the crowd, she was she was very well hidden and in a mask. <laughs> More than likely, she was probably either backstage or up in the balcony where we weren't allowed to. Yeah, go. probably so. You know, we didn't we didn't push our we didn't push our uh, limits with Rialto Ross to get special treatment right. to go upstairs. You know, we want the we Valerie were, Bertinelli seats. Yeah, we were we were, <laughs> we were we were grateful enough that he hooked us up with the tickets and wouldn't take the money from us. So we didn't want to. We didn't. I I personally didn't feel you got two extra beers out of that. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Nice. One was it one right. of the ones that I spilled on myself. Yeah. You know. So. <laughs> All right, so All we're right. back well, tomorrow. We are back tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. And just right. a heads up for those that may not have caught it live, there is a fun interview that I did 
with uh, the infidel, Bin Hamin, who is an independent wrestler that has made his way through the ranks of the, the lower echelon of the corporate world in wrestling. It's a great interview. It's a bit controversial because he kept kayfabe for a good part of it. Um, but it was a fun interview. And if you can make it past the first 10 minutes without getting offended, you will enjoy it because he <laughs> did stay in character for a good portion of the beginning. But so check that out. It should be right beneath this one. So just scroll down one more and it'll be the, ne it'll be the next video. Yes. Okay. Scroll up. <laughs> scroll up. Okay. All right. So we all know what you're saying. How can you miss us if we never go away? See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Peace. Watch Doom. <laughs>